The last chapter of Mishnah Brachas opens by saying that one who sees a place where miracles took place for the nation of Israel should say a blessing. The Gemara then explains this Mishnah giving examples of where it is applicable. These include the place of the parting of the Red Sea, the place where the Jordan River split for Joshua, the stone which Og, king of Bashan, wanted to throw on Israel, the stone on which Moses sat during the war with Amalek, the pillar of salt which was um, Lot's wife that she turned into it when she looked back at the city of Sodom, and the walls of Jericho which sank into the ground. The story of Og is a popular Jewish legend. Og was a giant who survived the great flood of Noah and became a friend of Abraham. Later he became an enemy of the people of Israel and tried to kill them all. The Gemara recounts that the Israelite camp was three parasangs long. A parasang is an ancient Persian measure of distance, and three of them would be about 12 miles. Og went and uprooted a mountain of the size of three parasangs and carried it on his head. But the Holy One, blessed be he, sent ants which bored a hole in the center of it, causing it to fall down and settle around his neck. When he tried to take it off, his teeth grew and stuck out in all directions, forcing him to leave the mountain there. To get an idea of how big Og was, Moses was ten cubits tall, about fifteen feet. He took a battle axe ten cubits long and jumped ten cubits high and cut Og in the ankle. It was a fatal blow, causing Og to bleed to death. The Gemara mentions the story of Yisro, that when he heard about the miracles that God performed for Israel, he exclaimed, Blessed is Hashem that rescued you. Therefore, for these miracles, it would be appropriate for all Jews to say a blessing. The Shulchan Aruch rules in regards to a miracle that was done for all of Israel, one is obligated to say the blessing that he did miracles for our fathers in this place and mention it with God's name and his dominion over the universe. The above cases were where a miracle was done for many people. However, there are cases where a miracle was done for an individual. The Gemara brings a situation where a man was miraculously saved from a lion. Rava, a Talmudic sage, said it to him, Whenever you pierce that place, say, Blessed be he who wrought for me a miracle in this place. There was the case Two of Mar, the son of Ravina, who was once going through the valley of Aravos and was suffering from thirst, and a well was miraculously created for him. In another case, a wild camel attacked a man, and at that moment the, the wall of a nearby house fell, allowing him to escape. For these it would be appropriate for them and their descendants to say the, the same of Racha, but not all Jews. Concerning this miracle, which an individual experienced, the Shulchan Aruch rules that he and his descendants, but not all Jews, would say, upon seeing the place that it occurred, the blessing that he performed for me 
miracles, a miracle for my father in this place. Also, God's and his dominion over the world should be mentioned. A blessing would also be said if the miracle occurred on behalf of one's rabbi. The following subject of the Gemara are the four classes of people who are obligated to offer thanksgiving. They are those who have crossed the sea, those who have journeyed through the wilderness, one who has recovered from illness, and a prisoner who has been set free. Today, travel is not as da- dangerous as it was in the days of the Talmud. Likewise, very often, illness was fatal, and prison incarceration was often a death sentence. Thank God things today are not nearly as bad as it was back then. However, illnesses can be fatal, and prison can be dangerous. As a result, people who have emerged from these situations are required to give thanksgiving to God. There are those who say that one only makes a blessing on a miracle that deviates from the norms of the world. However, a miracle that is within the world's natural processes, such as thieves come at night, there is a danger and one is rescued and likewise, a blessing would not be recited. But there are those who dispute this and say that it is good to make a blessing, but without the mention of the name of God and his kingdom. The custom, though, as brought in the prayer book, is to go to synagogue and after the reading of the Torah to make a blessing who bestows goodness on the guilty and who has bestowed every goodness upon me, including mentioning God's name and his dominion over the world. The blessings do not vary greatly from each other, but the fundamental message comes through. The word in Hebrew for miracle is nase, which is the same word for banner. So to speak, when Hashem does an act of kindness on our behalf openly, he is waving a flag as if to say, this came from me. In fact, everything comes from Hashem, including things that come by way of natural agency. Nevertheless, if we are cured of a disease, get out of jail, or arrive from a hazardous journey, we see the hand of providence through the veil of nature and are motivated to thank him pro- publicly for his kindness. If it is an open miracle where the deliverance seems to be nat- supernatural, he would want to thank God plus wave a flag as if to say not only is he thankful for the deliverance, but thankful for the divine revelation as well. When it is a big miracle done in the presence of all of the nation of the Israel, all the Jews in all generations want to loudly wave the flag of revelation in thanksgiving while proclaiming enthusiastically, this is my God and I will glorify him. Thank you.